Hello everyone, welcome back to this video series on clinical SAS SDTM programming. In this video, we will see how to create subject elements data set. So before we take a look at the specification, let's try to understand what is subject elements for this example. So in this study, let's assume that we are comparing active versus placebo which means there are two treatment arms the one corresponding to active treatment and the second one corresponding to placebo the subjects in each of these two arms undergo a period of screening and then followed by treatment period and then follow-up period so effectively we have three distinct phases uh, of periods so in which the subjects will undergo in this order screening treatment follow-up so within the treatment period, so some of the subjects will be receiving active, active treatment and the other subjects will be receiving placebo. So there can be multiple ways in which the number of elements could be defined. But for our convenience, so we are defining this as four elements. The period of time in which the subject undergoes screening and within the period of treatment. So for the subjects who are undergoing or who are taking active treatment, so we will call them as uh, undergoing active element and then for the subjects who are taking placebo so for the treatment period we call it as like uh, taking placebo element and then all the subjects will undergo follow-up which is common for both the subjects who are part of active or placebo so effectively we have four elements uh, in this study example which we are seeing some other specification authors prefer keeping it only as one element if it is a parallel arm design they just simply call it as treatment but again it's a it's a preference and sdtm ig does not uh, prevent us segregating these as two different elements or just keeping a common element so for, let's go with two different elements for treatment one is active and second one is placebo so in subject elements data set so what we do is we try to keep the start and end, end dates of each of the elements and it is considered that there is no gap between two elements the start of next element becomes the end of the previous element or the vice versa the end of the present element will become the start of the next element so effectively we need to identify the start of the screening start of treatment start of follow-up and there can be cases wherein there can be some subjects who are screen failures for them they will not start the treatment so we'll have to find an alternate way to populate the end date of screening because we cannot use the start of treatment for these subjects so similarly for the subjects who discontinue as per during treatment so they will not start follow-up element so we'll have to identify a way to end their uh, treatment element using some other alternative similarly uh, for the subjects who enter into follow-up again uh, they may discontinue during follow-up or they may complete the follow-up as well so for that cases again so we can use the start of the follow-up as a rule and then use an alternate end date uh, concept for populating the end date for follow-up so we will now see uh, how to uh, we will now see the specification for this and then we'll see the programming so the key specification uh, the key variables for SC specification would be the start date and end date variables for each of the elements so we would have to define the start and end date rule for each of the possible elements in this study so as we discussed in the uh, design that we are going with four elements for this so let's see how the start dates are being defined for each of the four elements first and the other things are supportive to these start and end dates so for screening so for all the subjects who signed informed consent it technically those should be the subjects who are present in the study otherwise it would be considered as a protocol violation if sub if some data is collected without having the informed consent signed so that is considered a protocol violation and it would in fact become a cause of concern for the sponsor so for screening so we are being asked to use the value from dm sdtm dm data set from the variable rfic dtc so screening element is considered to be started from the day when the subject signed the informed consent and so we have seen that in this study or in this example which we were which we are discussing so the treatment can be active or placebo based on the arm to which the subject is assigned so for the subjects who are assigned to 
active. So that can be checked by using the value present in ARM CD and DEM data set. For those subjects, we are being asked to populate with the value from RFXST DTC. And again, uh, we have to note that a subject will either be part of active arm or placebo arm. So for the subjects who have, who belong to active arm, they will get an element corresponding to active. And for the subjects who belong to placebo element, for the uh, placebo arm, they will have the placebo element corresponding to treatment. So it is the same, but again, uh, we will be populating the element CD element code as active for these arm CD subjects, and we'll be populating the uh, element code as placebo for this subjects who are assigned to placebo and for both of the elements the start date is rfxstdtc because it is the treatment start date and for follow up what are we being asked to do is for the subjects who entered into follow up period so we are being given a condition in the parenthesis on how to check whether the subject is entered into follow up or not record with non missing svstdtc and sdtm sv visit contains follow up so for the subjects who enter into follow up there must be a record in sv with a visit containing the text follow up so only those subjects are considered to be entered into follow up for that subjects we are being asked to create the star dt for follow up based on the value from EOIP EOSTDT underscore RA after converting to ISO 8601 format. So we are using SV to check whether a subject entered into follow up or not, but populating the star date of follow up using the end of IP form. So which is the, the date when the subject is considered to have ended the treatment from UOIP data set. Again, these rules can vary very widely from study to study. Consider this as only as an example or as a reference or as a starting point for your understanding. So for the subjects who entered into follow up, so we are being asked to populate the start of the follow up using the end of IP EOSTDT raw. So EOIP EOSTDT raw contains the date when in which the subject actually ended taking the treatment. And then let's take a look at the SCE and DTC for each of the element. For screening, so we have now two conditions here. So for the sub subjects with non-missing RFX STDTC, so these will be the subjects who began their treatment. So for the subjects who started their treatment, so we are being asked to use the start date of treatment for end of screening and for the subjects with missing rfx stdtc value means for the subjects who have not taken any treatment yet or who discontinued during treatment so for them rfx stdtc value will be missing for those subjects we are being asked to use the value rfpe and dtc from sdtm dm domain to populate the screening end date so it is split into two whether the subject is treated or not. If treated, use the treatment start date as the end of screening date. And if not treated, so we are using the RFP and DTC from SDTM domain. So for B and C, which means for both active and placebo elements. So what are we being asked to use for end date of element? For the subjects who entered follow up, so we were asked to check that using SV data set equals to the value from EOIP EOSTDT raw after converting into ISO 8601 format. And for the subjects who did not enter follow up, again, there are two conditions here. So populate with the EOSTDT raw using EOS cat is equal to end of study. So there can be subjects who discontinue the study while they are on treatment before entering into follow up. For those subjects, we are being asked to populate the end of study date from EOS uh, data set as end date of treatment. And for the subject who has no end date, end of study record, populate with the latest value from SVE and DTC of that subject. So again, there are multiple components involved. So if we see for the subjects who entered follow up, who did not enter follow up, who did not enter follow up, we need to check two conditions, whether they have an EOS record or whether they do not have an EOS record. If they have EOS record, we'll have to use EOS data. And if they do not have, we are, we are supposed to use the latest data available from SVE and DTC. And then for follow up, 
for the subjects with non-missing SC, ST, DTC for follow-up element, which means for the subject who has a documented evidence that they entered into follow-up. So we are being asked to check whether has an end of study record, which is again, so from EOS data. So if, there, if EOS exists, we are being asked to use the end of study date for end of follow-up. But if they do not have a end of study record, so we are being asked to populate it with the value from SV, E, and DTC. So we have some date values coming from SDTM, DM, for example, RFX, ST, DTC, and RFIC, DTC, and RFP, E, and DTC. And there are some records or values coming from raw EOIP data set and some date values coming from EOS. So we are in fact making use of the presence in a presence of a value in a presence of a record and presence of a value in these date variables to identify whether a subject is meeting the criteria of a particular element. For example, we are checking for the presence of a value, non-missing value in RFX STDTC to determine if the subject has actually uh, uh, subject actually qualifies for a row creation for RFX ST uh, treatment. So we'll now see the program and then try to understand it in more detail. So let's go to the program. So here, like in previous videos, I have my data stored in this program. I am including that program to generate all the data sets for this lesson. So here I am creating te some temporary copies of some, some major input data set. The first one is SDTM DM, second one is end of study, third one is EOIP, and the fourth one is SV data set. So basically how I approach SC creation is to create or fetch all the input required variables into a single data set at one record per subject level, and then try to identify whether a subject qualifies for the creation of a row for an element or not. So we'll see that now. So the first thing that I am doing here is keep the required date variables in SDTM DM data set. So I'm using my DM temporary data copy, which I have created. And I need some of the variables like RFST DTC, RFE and DTC, XST DTC, PE and DTC, IC DTC, and along with that, in order to create a uh, row corresponding to placebo element or active element, I need the variables arm CD. And then uh, for RFX ST DTC, all I need is the date component in the input data set. If you are following my previous videos, so in RFX ST DTC, we created it as both having date and time. But for this example, I only need, uh, for this SC creation, I only need the date component of it. So I'm making use of sub STRN to filter or extract only the date component. And then I'm creating a new variable uh, called RFST DT to hold the numeric uh, date value of RFST DT. So and then the next thing that we needed a date value from end of IP page that was from the record where EOS cat is equal to end of treatment and then EOS DT raw not is equal to missing. So I am getting that uh, using that EOS DT raw, raw date value and converting it into ISO 8601 format and storing it in a variable called EOIP DTC. So as this is a raw data set, as the other data set which I was using was an SDTM data set, to merge these two data sets together, I am creating the U sub JD variable here using the same logic that I have used in my SDTM DM creation, concatenating the value of study and PT with a hyphen in between, and then keeping U sub JD and EOIP DTC. And similarly, so I needed some information, some date values from end of study page. So, and that was the record which was corresponding to US cat is equal to end of study and where the date is not missing. And then similarly, I am converting the raw date value to ISO 8601 format, creating U sub JD and then keeping only the required variables. And then we needed some dates from SV as well, like the latest date available for subject in SV and also the earliest date corresponding to follow up. So for that, what I am doing here is I am creating, I'm using my temporary SP01 data set and creating a data set called FUP01 and sorting the record based on U sub JD and SVST DTC and filtering the rows where visit contains follow up. So, and as I have sorted this data set based on U sub JD and SVST DTC, FUP01 will have the earliest SVST DTC record within each subject on top. And then instead of making first dot and last dot concept, what I have done here is I have 
used fup01 applying a node up key on u sub jd if there exists more than one record for subject so what happens is the first record would be outputted to out is equal to fup dtc as i am using node up key here so i made sure that the earliest record is coming on top uh, within fup01 here and in the next step i am keeping the first record for each u sub jd by making use of node up key again you could write the same logic using first dot so u sub jd and then output to fup dtc in a data step as well so here i am renaming the earliest svst dtc from fup01 as fup dtc so which is kind of indicating that the uh, fup start date here and then we also needed the latest date available uh, in sv for each subject so i am using my sv01 data set and sv latest is being created here so in this step what i am doing here is i am sorting the record based on u sub jd and descending sve and dtc so which means the latest record latest sve and dtc would record would come on top within each u sub jd similar to the previous logic here so i am applying a node up key at u sub jd level so when i apply node up key at u sub jd level the first record for each u sub jd is kept in the output data set so here on the first record i have made sure that the first record has the latest date here so and that latest date which is available in sv and dtc i am renaming it as sv latest dtc and now i have all the key date variables derived in separate data set now i will try to fetch these all of these date values into a single data set that is already having some of my date variables and that is my dm data set I, i already have some subject level key date variables and arm related variables in dm02 so i have derived some other uh, raw date values using raw data sets or other sdtm data sets say for example this fup dtc and sv latest two are being obtained from the sdtm sv data set but for eoip and eos dtc these were derived from raw eoip and raw eos data sets and then i am calling the output data set as key dates 01 so this data set effectively has all my required component start and end dates which could be used for all populating the start and end dates of each of the elements so now let us see what is being done so let us take a look at key date 01 data set to understand how i created so i think till this rfst dtc the variables are coming from my demographics data set and then eoip dtc i have fetched it using raw eoip eos dtc i have created from raw eos data set fup dtc and uh, sv latest dtc are obtained from sdtm sv data set now i will be able to check whether a uh, subject entered into treatment or not by checking for the presence of a value in rfxst dtc and i will be able to check if a subject has an end of study record by checking for the presence of a value in eos dtc similarly for if i want to check for the presence of eoip record i can check for non missing value in eoip dtc and if i want to identify if a subject entered into follow up or not i can make use of this variable fup dtc and find if there is a value in that variable or not so for the subjects who do not have a value in fup dt c indicates that the subject do not did not enter into follow up yet so this is how we can make use of all of these key variables to check whether a record can be created for a element for a subject or not so we will now move on to the creation of rows for each of the elements so let's now go to the program again so here we are creating records for elements using the key date variables which we have kept in single data set so the first one is screening element so we have seen that for screening element we were asked to use the rfic dtc as the start date so for all of these things so these are manually assigned values so as i am creating the record for screening i am assigning the uh, abbreviation scr for etcd variable and i am giving the full text of screening for element variable so as we and we are also assigning the text screening to the epoch variable 
for SEST DTC for screening element it was supposed to be RFIC DTC so here I, I was not sure whether uh, RFIC DTC also had the date and time but so if that is the case I am extracting only the date component for SEST DTC and then as this is the first element I am assigning an element order of 1 and then for creation of end date of screening there were two conditions you know for the first one was to check if the subject was treated if the subject took treatment the subject would have had that rfst dtc populated rf xst dtc populated if rf xst dtc is populated i am populating the end date using rf xst dtc which means the start of treatment is triggering the end of uh, screening element so for the subjects who do not or who did not take a treatment yet so for them we were asked to use the value from rfp and dtc in sdtm dm domain so for the all the other subjects when so this is not is equal to the opposite would be is equal to missing for such subjects so we are using rfp and dtc for end of screening element so now we have all the key variables uh, values assigned for all of these variables and the SEST DTC and SE and DTC variables have a value assigned based on the specification. And the next thing that we are doing here is we are creating an element corresponding to treatment. So for the subjects who belong to active arm, so we'll have to create an element called active. And for the subject who belong to placebo arm, so we'll have to create an element called placebo. So for that what we are doing here is so again so the important thing to note is that we will create an element corresponding to treatment only for treated subjects so because in subject elements data set we will have to create an element only when there is sufficient documentation or sufficient data showing that the subject actually entered into that element so it is the actual element the subject has passed through so for example if the subject is a screen failure he or she cannot have any elements after the screening element so if the subject discontinued during treatment but did not enter into follow up so what should be the case is the subject can have screening element and an element corresponding to the treatment but not follow because the subject did not actually enter into the follow up so in your trial elements you will have all the possible elements defined but in subject elements it will be the elements through which the subject has passed through so okay so here we are checking or creating a row for corresponding to uh, the treatment elements only for the subjects who took a treatment so we are checking whether rfxst dtc is not null only for those subjects so this elements get created so we have seen that for the subjects who belong to uh, actual arm uh, arm cd of active so we were asked to create the etcd of active and for placebo so we were asked to assign the text uh, create the element corresponding to placebo so we are instead of manually assigning i am making use of the value present in arm cd in etcd here so if a sub let's say two exam two subjects who who were treated and on the first subject so belongs to active for that subject the etcd is supposed to be active so this is handled by arm cd and say for example for the second subject who belong to placebo we had to assign the value of placebo to this etcd so again for that subject in the arm cd variable the value would be placebo so instead of manually assigning the element code i am making use of the value from arm cd variable here and then I am assigning the epoch as treatment for these records and the start date for the treatment element of active and placebo so it is supposed to be the treatment start date so which is why we are using the value from rfxstdtc and assigning it to scstdtc so within a subject the element order is 2 so uh, after screening the next element corresponds to treatment so for that we are assigning the value of 2 to the trial element order so and the, for the end date of treatment there were multiple conditions so we were asked to check whether subject had an EOIP DTC and if that is the case so we were asked to populate the value from EOIP DTC so we are assigning using that otherwise we were asked to use the value from latest uh, date from SV so we are 
using that here for treatment end date. So now let us move on to the next element, follow-up element. So for FUP01, we are supposed to create an element for follow-up for only those subjects who have documented evidence that they entered into follow-up. In this case, so we were asked to check for the presence of follow-up by uh, checking if they have a record in SV where uh, visit contains follow-up. So we have used that logic and created this FUPDTC variable. So only for those subjects who have FUPDTC populated, we are creating this row or this element follow-up. So FUP is being assigned to ETCD, follow-up for element, epoch is follow-up. So start date for uh, follow-up is, we were we are supposed to use EOIPDTC and for subjects who have an end of study date, we are using the value from EOSDTC for SCE and DTC. For the other subjects, we are using the latest SVDTC for SCE and DTC. Now we have created three separate data sets for the elements corresponding to screening or treatment or follow-up. Let us take a quick look at these three data sets. So as all subjects had their ICDTC present, so we are expecting a record for all eight subjects for screening. So let us take a look at this. So we have all for all eight subjects, we have screening element created. Now let's go back to the key date zero two, key date zero one and see how many subjects are expected to have a treatment related element. So if we take a look at this data set out of the eight subjects, we do not have RFX DTC populated for three subjects. So which means these three, these three subjects are not expected to have a element corresponding to treatment. So only five subjects are expected to have treatment elements, treatment related element. So let's take a look at TIT01 and see how many subjects have that. So if we see now here we have five subjects having treatment element created. So again, in the, with the element corresponding to treatment, we were splitting it based on the treatment they were assigned to. So of which three subjects have active element and the other two subjects have placebo element. But in broader sense, these are all treatment elements in which we have split the element separately based on the arm to which they belong to. And now let's come back to the key date 01 and then see how many subjects are expected to have the follow-up element. So we have created this variable called FUPDTC to check whether they actually entered into follow-up or not. So out of all the subjects, only one subject has FUPDTC populated. So only for this subject, FUP element should have been created. So only for that 1007, we have the FUPDTC created. And then what do we do next is we combine all these three individual elements into a single data set. So we are doing that here and then we are assigning the text SC to domain and then in order to calculate study days. So what we are doing here is so we are creating numeric versions of SC, ST, DTC and SE and DTC into the variables SC, ST, DT and SE and DT. So we also had that RF, ST, DTC as part of our uh, demographic status it so we don't need any additional margins so we have already created the numeric version of it in DM so, and we derived in fact created uh, merged all our intermediate variables to this DM so RFX TDT is already present in our all the rows of uh, each individual elements so we are making use of RFX TDT on that row on each row and then using SC, STDT and SC, NDT to create SC, STDY and SC, ENDY. So study days are created next. And then we are keeping only the required variables from the SV, SC data set. So did we create SC seek here? Yep. So in the, as an intermediate step, so we are creating a, uh, SC seek here, we are sorting the records based on use of JD and trial arm element order. And then on the first record of each subject, so we are assigning the value of one to SC seek and on all the other records, so we are incrementing it by one. So and in the next step, we have created study days. And then in the next step, we have assigned some labels to the variables and kept only the required variables in the domain. And in the next step, we are storing the permanent copy of this data set and assigning a label to the data set and then creating an XPT file for this. So this is how we can create 
subject elements data set so let us take a final look at the SC04 data set to see how it looked like so eight elements of screening and five for treatment and eight plus five is 13 plus one follow-up so it is supposed to have 14 records yes we have 14 records and then within each subject uh, if we take a look at this subject so 1004 so this subject had screening element and this subject belonged to active arm so this subject have active so there was only one subject who entered into follow-up that was 1007 so he should have he or she should have three records screening and I think this subject belongs to placebo so we have placebo element created and then the follow-up element created so if we see only for subject 1001, 1002 and 1003 these subject were never dosed so only screening element is present so this is how we can create SE data set thank you for watching and keep learning